May Jesus and Mary be loved by all hearts. I've got a long list of things to talk about, but the sign of peace just got scooted up the list because yesterday, during a daily Mass, the priest invited us to extend the sign of peace, and no one sitting near me would look at anyone. Stone cold rebellion to the rubric. In these chats, I'm going to talk as if I was sitting as a guest in your living room, not standing at a podium. I'll do a minimum script to stay on track and keep it short, but I'm not going to dive into hours of research to back up every claim with exact quotes from precise texts. In the Missal of Pius V and the Missal of Paul VI, we have the canon, then the Our Father, then the Church, picks up the last line of the Our Father, Deliver us from evil, with the priest saying, Libera nos, etc., in Latin or English or whatever vernacular language. It starts out, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, etc. In the Missal of Pius V, after the Council of Trent, the Libera nos is a little longer, because it invokes the intercession of Our Lady and the saints, particularly naming Peter, Paul, and Andrew, whereas in the Missal of Paul VI, it cuts to the chase. We notice something similar back at the beginning of Mass at the Confidior. The old Missals insert a list of saints, confessing our sins to St. Michael, St. John the Baptist, St. Peter and Paul, etc., in the Old Carmelite Mass, we confess our sins to St. Elijah, Teresa of Avila, and John of the Cross. But of course, that's the Discalce Carmelites. The ancient order of Carmel wouldn't have included the Reformers, Teresa and John, but probably had some different Carmelites. If we did some research, I expect the Norbertine Mass confesses to St. Norbert, and the Dominican Mass confesses to St. Dominic, and so on. I don't know if any historian can say exactly how many versions of the Latin Mass there have been down through the ages since the 4th and 5th century when Latin took over Greek as the vernacular liturgical language in the western part of the crumbling Roman Empire. The way people in the pews talk today, there are only two versions of the Latin Mass, the one that emerged from the Council of Trent and the version that emerged from the Vatican Council. Not only do we have 26 rites in the Catholic Church, and just one of these is our Latin rite, also called the Roman rite, there is a huge variety of traditions within the Latin rite. So I'm not going to go down some rabbit hole to ask why the post-Vatican II Mass made the Confidior and Liberanos prayers more generic in its reference to the saints. I think we can hazard a guess that down through the ages, the local Mass inserted names of saints that were popular in the region. Every year we canonize more saints, and the Church lets local areas celebrate Mass in honor of those saints because they can't all fit into the universal calendar. For example, who doesn't love Bernadette? But so far, her feast is only celebrated in France and a few special places. So let's continue. Directly after the Liberanos prayer, in every version of the Latin Mass that I know of, there is the sign of peace. In the Missal of Pius V, the priest says, Pax Domini sit semper voibiscum, which means the peace of the Lord be always with you. And the servers respond, et cum spiritu tuo, and with your spirit. In the low mass, the people hardly notice that, because the priest is still speaking softly in Latin. But in the high mass, the sanctuary is often filled with attendants. The priest turns to the deacon and offers the sign of peace. Then the deacon turns to the subdeacon and he offers the sign of peace. The subdeacon turns to the acolyte to offer the sign of peace. Now my knowledge of terms breaks down here. In the olden days, it was unheard of for children to serve mass. Anyone in the sanctuary had received the tonsure and there were many levels of tonsure below subdeacon. Today, to the people in the pews, it looks to us like the subdeacon is offering the sign of peace to the head altar boy, or to the man who trains and leads the altar boys. 
At this point, the sign of peace splits into two movements. One altar server turns to his left and the other to his right, and each sends the sign of peace down the row of servers. The buck stops there. The greeting stays in the sanctuary. But remember, the priest had said, the peace of the Lord be always with you, and servers respond on our, our behalf. The Missal of Pius V was not envisioned as a dialogue mass. By the 1500s, Latin was no longer the common language of Europe. It had become the language of the ritual, and the servers responded on behalf of the people. Increasingly large churches were built, and there was no audio system, so the Mass was no longer the cozy celebration of the upper room, or the catacombs, or the homes of Christians, or the village church. The sign of peace was meant for everybody, not just the servers. In Wichita, the Latin Mass congregation was, that's how they was designated, was reminded once a month that the people in the pews could follow in their missiles, but they were supposed to be quiet. The servers made the responses, and the scola sang the Latin chants. The Mass of Pius V was not envisioned as a dialogue Mass. However, some of that was creeping in before Vatican II, so we won't go there, though. The older sisters used to tell us that when they were novices before Vatican II, they knelt behind the grill on the floor during the entire Mass except to get in line for Holy Communion. They could not hear a word, so they spent the Mass praying one rosary after another, and that was considered the proper way for nuns to attend Mass, and I think it was happening in the congregations too. Let's read now from the 2012 rubric for the Missal of Paul VI. After the Liberanos prayer, says number 154, then the priest, with hands extended, says aloud the prayer, Domine Jesu Christi, qui dixisti. It goes on, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, etc. And when this prayer is concluded, extending and then joining his hands, the priest announces the greeting of peace, facing the people and saying, The peace of the Lord be with you always. And the people reply, And with your spirit. Just like the Missal of Pius V. Remember, the Missal of Paul VI can be celebrated in almost any language, including Latin. So I don't like to use the word Latin Mass, which is extremely generic and basically a useless term. Continuing with number 154 of the 2012 rubrics, After this, if appropriate, the priest adds, let us offer each other the sign of peace. In other words, it's optional. Many priests omit this if they find it inappropriate at a daily Mass. Usually they want to streamline it for people who have to get to work, and they cut back on the intercession prayers and other optional places too. Returning to 154, the priest may give the sign of peace to the ministers, but always remains within the sanctuary so that the celebration is not disrupted. Period. Again, just like the Missal of Pius V, the priest offers a sign of peace to everybody first, and then he can do so to individuals, but he has to remain in the sanctuary unless there are special exceptions determined by the Conference of Bishops for that nationwide area. But even in those circumstances, the priest can't go up and down the aisles, as number 154 states, quote, if the dioceses of the United States of America, for a good reason, on special occasions, for example in the case of a funeral, a wedding, or when civic leaders are present, the priest may offer the sign of peace to a small number of the faithful near the sanctuary. Period. Now the rubrics get interesting. Quote, according to what is decided by the Conference of Bishops, all express to one another peace, communion, and charity. While the sign of peace is being given, it is permissible to say, The peace of the Lord be with you always, to which the reply is, Amen. So, that's what we are supposed to say in the pews. Not, Happy Birthday, not, Good to see you, or anything else off the cuff. But there are no specific rubrics for bodily expression. Can we wave? Can we hug? 
kiss or slap the back of our neighbor? Can we cross the aisle? That's where the sign of peace has become the pesky sign of peace. In some communities, it's not the sign of communion and charity, but a sign of irritation and disagreements. It's so irritating for some people that you may have encountered what I did the other day, that nobody was sitting near me would look at anyone. They stood motionless, staring at the altar or staring at their feet. It was stone-cold rebellion to random expressions of an unclear rubric. It looks like rebellion against the sign of peace, but I'm sure it's not that bad. What can you and I do to heal this painful lack of visible communion, to get rid of this sign of irritation? Some priests know there is friction, and that's why they omit it at daily Mass. But they would get challenged by some parishioners, and possibly other priests correctly, if they stopped inviting people to extend the sign of peace, at least on Sunday Mass, which is the equivalent of the High Mass in the Missal of Pius V, where the sign is extended physically to all the people in the sanctuary. One common solution to a pesky, disorderly sign of peace has been the COVID solution, which some dioceses, like Wichita, had implemented long before COVID. This is the touchless sign of peace. Each person stands in the pew with hands folded and looks at his neighbor, smiles, and tilts his folded hands toward the neighbor. It's quiet, it's respectful, and it's actually quite popular. But I've been told that the Maronite rite has the better, more theological version of the sign of peace and closer to how it's done in many other versions of the Latin rite, including the way we did it in Carmel. The sign of peace does not belong at the beginning of Mass, as some suggest. It is not a friendly hello. It always comes directly after the consecration of the Eucharist when Jesus has come to our altar, and after the Our Father, in which Jesus reminds us that we should abstain from receiving communion if we haven't been to confession regarding our serious trespasses against our neighbor. Then, just like the night of the resurrection, Jesus is standing among us, and the first thing he says to us is, Peace be with you. This is also very reminiscent of the communion sacrifice in the Law of Moses. In a holocaust, the victim is burnt up, but in a communion sacrifice, the priest offers the victim on the altar, but then first cuts off a portion and turns from the altar to give it to the faithful as a sign that God is pleased with your offering and has forgiven your sin, and you are supposed to sit down and eat it with the congregation while the priest burns up the rest of the sacrifice. The symbolism is more than a symbol at Mass. We are literally eating the Lamb of God in the flesh, in the peace of Christ, rejoicing in the company of one mystical body. So the Maronite rite receives the gift of peace from Jesus, newly confected on the altar. The priest turns and offers it to a minister, and then the sign spreads through the sanctuary, as is done in all the versions of the Latin Mass, which I'm aware of. But in the Maronite ritual, two servers leave the sanctuary and stand at the end of each aisle to pass on the sign of peace. The person on the end of the aisle turns to his neighbor and on down the aisle, while the servers are moving to the next aisle. You are probably thinking right now of Holy Saturday, where one candle is lit from the Paschal candle, which represents the risen Lord, and then the light is passed from person to person. We don't stand in the aisles and share cigarette lighters to light each other's candles. The light proceeds from one source, just as the Maronite ritual makes it clear that we receive the gift of peace and forgiveness from one source. In Carmel, one server came to the grill and covered the folded hands of the sister sacristan. She turned to the next sister and covered that sister's folded hands. That sister crossed over, and this was passed down the column to the choir on the other side. 
Wouldn't it be great if parishes would initiate this as the local custom? It would not be changing the current rubric number 154, which does not specify exactly how the congregation physically extends the sign of peace, except for the words, which can be omitted. You are only offering the sign to one person, the person next to you in your aisle. Now, if that's a spouse, you can kiss, or if it's someone unknown, you can shake hands, or if you sense that the person is afraid of germs, you can just smile and nod, or the parish can suggest its own local custom. I challenge you to talk to your friends and make a visit to your pastor to express an interest in introducing this to your parish. It would help to resolve the awkwardness and hurt that some people feel for a rubric that they don't understand or have seen irreverently abused. And by the way, the sign of peace has always been a bit pesky. I'm speaking from memory for what a priest was saying at a conference somewhere at the grill years ago, so I can't remember the exact Latin mass he was referring to. It seems to me that it was either the Canterbury Mass or the Salisbury Mass. In the Middle Ages, the customs of those two cities became the general norm in England, except for monasteries, of course, which had their own rubrics. While some of the servers in the sanctuary were a bit stuffy regarding any direct touching, so the priest kissed the paten, and then the paten was passed around the sanctuary for each man to kiss. So I'll conclude this talk by blowing you a kiss. Peace be with you.